well in this lecture we are going to study sources of water sources of water if you remember the flow chart flow chart for water supply engineering where does it start it started sources right from sources you have to collect the water and then you have to convey the water to treatment plant and then you have to distribute the water to the community right this is how we have written the flow chart so let us start from the first point uh, if you want to design the water supply system you have to design all these components that's why we have to start from the sources right first let us study what are the types of sources if you want to choose the suitable source for the supplying of water first we have to understand what are the sources so generally we will have two types of sources we have two types of sources what are they surface source and subsurface source subsurface source what are the examples for surface source like rivers lakes ponds streams reservoirs all these come under surface sources right similarly the sub the example for subsurface sources are springs infiltration galleries infiltration galleries or infiltration wells etc okay let us see each each type of source if you observe the rivers and streams they come under one category the flow is continuous sometimes it could be continuous sometimes it could be intermittent lakes and ponds they are still water still water means the lake or pond it will have since it will have boundary the water will be stagnated because of this reason the quality of lakes the quality of water in lakes and ponds are very good compared to the other sources the reason is when you have still water whatever the impurities that are present in this water they will be sedimented at the bottom of the lake or pond right the because of the sedimentation process the impurities will be settled and at the bottom of the lake or pond that's why the water will be little bit clear okay but they have their own disadvantages we will discuss them later uh, if you see the difference between lake and pond the pond will have less depression the pond will have less depression whereas for lakes the depth is high depression in the sense depth so for lakes depression is more more depression for ponds depression is less there is the only difference between lakes and ponds reservoirs you already know uh, it is a man made structure uh, to store the water okay let us see the subsurface sources why we are reading all the, why we are studying all the types of sources is if you have if you want to design a water supply system to a city first you have to know which source you have to choose definitely for a city it might have river nearby lakes nearby or reservoir there, is, there might be a reservoir nearby but if you want to design a system you should always choose only one source you should always design a water supply system for only one source you cannot uh, you cannot take uh, t uh, some percentage of water from river some percentage of water from lakes some percentage of water from infiltration galleries like that you cannot design the, the, you cannot design a system like that you have to design a system only for one source always design system only for one source only for one source okay that's why before designing the system you should know all the sources what are their properties then you have to choose the better one okay and let us come to springs the water coming from springs has highest quality 
the quality of water coming from the springs is highest quality because it will be filtrated through the, through the soil layers but the amount of water coming from the springs will be very very less you cannot satisfy the needs of a city or town similarly infiltration galleries infiltration galleries uh, generally they are provided below the uh, let me change it Uh, the infiltration galleries are provided near the river bed okay let's see this is an example of river this is a river cross section just assume that this is a river cross section so when you have a river like this there definitely there will be infiltration of water into the ground right so to capture that water generally engineers provide one infiltration gallery here infiltration gallery or infiltration well it is nothing but a tunnel perforated tunnel perforated tunnel means the top play the top surface of the infiltration gallery or infiltration well ha will have openings small slightest small openings these openings will allow only water to infiltrate it will not allow any soil particles or sand particles into this tunnel it will allow it will allow only water to enter into the opening or tunnel so that's how you are going to gather water and this water will be used for different purposes okay if the tunnel is made in horizontal direction if the tunnel is made in horizontal direction then it is called as infiltration gallery infiltration gallery right similarly if the tunnel is provided in the vertical direction tunnel is provided in the vertical direction then it is called as infiltration well infiltration well See, here also as like in springs the water quality is very good the water quality is very good but the only problem is the amount of water you are going to gather is less the quantity of water will be less quality is high quantity is less okay these are the different types of sources let us say as i told you for a city for city assume that for city some city there are different types of sources source a b c d there are different types of water sources that are existed in that uh, near existed near the city to choose among these five sources uh, you have to go according to the following steps first one is quantity quality distance and topography and topography assume that city Uh, the city has a b c d e sources and all the sources are producing same quantity same quantity of water let's say this is river this is reservoir this is uh, just assume infiltration gallery or uh, this is some, some x source uh, x kind of source this is also some y kind of source when you have different sources available for the city uh, then you have to choose which source is providing more quantity of water okay suppose all the five sources are providing same quantity of water then you have to choose uh, which is going which is giving you good quality of water let's say uh, c and d c d e all these three are giving good quality of, since uh, quantities from all these sources is same just assuming since all the quantities uh, water quality is coming from all these five sources is same that's why i am choosing which one is which one has more better quality so a and b has little less quality of water so we are eliminating them among c d and e since they are providing same quality of water we'll see which source is nearer to the city 
source e and source e is far away from the city so i can eliminate it but both source c and d are nearer to the city which are nearly same distance from city then i will, I will go for fourth step topography i will check of uh, let's say city c is here and city d is here both are at 10 kilometers from the city distance is same but if i see from source d to city the topography is not so good topography means the surface of the earth the topography is not so good but from city c to d uh, city c uh, city uh, city to c the topography is more or less smooth in such cases you will opt for city c you are going to eliminate city d that's how you, you have to choose the best source for the water supply these are these four points are very important how you are, how you are going to choose the better source base first you will check for quantity after that you will go for quality then distance and topography after satisfying all the four needs you will choose the best one okay right after choosing the source what should you do you have to follow the flow chart in the flow chart what is the first 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 step first step is source after choosing the source what should you do you have to collect the water from source right if you remember correctly you have to collect the water from source so collection of water how we do that collection of water is done by providing intake structures intake structures intake structures are provided to collect the water from sources so the typical diagram of intake structure is going to look like this let's say this is a water source this is a water source and this is concrete wall huge concrete wall you will have huge concrete wall with openings at different locations i will tell you what are what are these locations and it will have some pump above that you will have one intake structure from here you are going to collect and convey the water to the source okay the purpose of providing these openings are suppose since you will have you have to take the water from the source you have to provide one pump it is going to uh, suck the water from the bottom and it is going to deliver the water deliver the water to uh, treatment plant through the conveyance system right suppose if you have more water if you have water depth up to this point then what should you do you have to close these two openings and you have to open this opening uh, and you have to collect the water from here through this pump the reason is if you are if you want to always collect the water from this uh, this opening it is going to take more energy the pump has to work with a lot of uh, energy to gather the to bring the water from lower elevation to higher lower elevation to higher elevation but when you have more water like this there is no need to go from bottom of the uh, source they simply you collect the water from here so that energy will be less at the same time the one more advantage is the water at the top surface will have good quality compared to the bottom of the source the reason is there will be lot of sediment waste there will be lot of sediment waste that is existed at the bottom of the tank uh, bottom of the source okay that's why depending on the level of the water you you open the sortable opening okay and this is called as storage storage tank so as assuming this is a assuming this is a river the river will not have same water all the time so what should you do when you have more water you are going to collect that water and store in this tank otherwise uh, if you assume that the water will be existed any time in the river uh, in some, some case in difficult critical situation the water will not be present to avoid that you will collect the water and you store it 
so once when whenever there is a need you deliver the water to the treatment plant through the conveying system that's why you need to have storage tank suppose if the source is reservoir assume that this is a reservoir reservoir is itself storing the water in such cases there is no need of storage tank so in the intake structure you will not provide any storage tank simply you will pump the water and convey the water okay uh, that's why based on this depending on the source and depending on the requirement of storage tank intake structures are divided into two types wet intake structures wet intake structures and dry intake structures dry intake structures in case of wet intake structures you will have pump you will have storage tank and you will have conveyance system it is a conveyance system is common for all but in case of dry intake structure uh, through the pump you will collect the water and you convey the water but you do not store you do not store any water here in case of wet intake structures you collect the water but you do not you you do store the water after collecting the water you store the water and then you convey the water right you convey the water there are three steps collection storage conveyance but in case of dry intake structure dry intake structures you will have only two steps collection of water conveyance of water no there is no storage of water okay this is also important point this is all about collection of water in the flow chart what is the third step we study sources collection of water how we collect the water using intake structures and then we will convey the water right okay before conveying the water uh, getting into the topic let's see what is the uh, power required by this pump what is the power required by this pump if you see let's say this is a source of water and you have pump here and the city is present here the city or community is located here so the total head required for the pump is calculated as this the power is generally expressed in terms of horsepower brake pump brake horse power bhp the power of pump the power required for the pump is expressed in terms of bhp bhp for a pump is calculated by the formula gamma w q into h 0.746 into efficiency of motor into efficiency of pump this is the formula using this formula we will calculate the power required for the pump to collect and convey the water to the city okay you know gamma w is the unit weight of water unit weight of water and q is the discharge the amount of water that is to be delivered to the city using pump and h is the total head h is the total head uh, that is to be given to the water assume that the water is in still condition here so the energy of, uh, assuming there is no potential energy the water will have zero energy since it is in uh, still condition generally the energy will be in the form of potential energy and kinetic energy the water is in still condition it means water is not moving when there is no movement then there will be no kinetic energy it will have only potential energy and i am assuming that the water level itself is the datum so obviously the height is zero potential energy will be zero so if you want to take the water from this location to this location the water has to spend some energy that energy will be given by the pump to the water how how does it giving it is providing some head okay this total head required for the water will be equal to this is called as suction head and then uh, in addition to this the the city location is here so obviously it has to move in the upward direction so this is called as delivery head okay 
this is the amount of initiation to this you have, you have to if you want to move the water through these pipes definitely there will be frictional losses so to avoid this to overcome this friction losses you have to provide some extra energy to the water that is called as dynamic head that is called as dynamic head okay so the sum of suction head the sum of suction head plus delivery head is called as static head static head total head total head that to be given to the water is equal to static head plus dynamic head right it has to move from this loca location a to location c uh, from a to c the height whatever the height difference that is called as static static head it is divided into two parts one is suction head and second is delivery head suction head means the uh, pulling water to the pump level delivery head means throwing the water from uh, pump level to ct that is called as the sum is called as static head and uh, to travel from pump to ct the water has to travel through the pipes and in the pipes it will have frictional losses to overcome the frictional losses you have to provide extra energy to the water that is called as dynamic head okay the total head that is to be provided by the pump should be th uh, which is equal to static head plus dynamic head and it is represented by capital h divided by 0.746 it is uh, used to convert the energy into horsepower and uh, this is efficiency of motor and this is efficiency of pump using this formula you will, you will calculate the brake horsepower of the pump okay right we'll see what is the next step conveyance of water conveyance of water the third step is conveyance of water uh, conveyance of water can be done using two different systems first one is gravity conveyance system gravity conveyance system and second one is pressure conveyance system pressure conveyance system the example for gravity uh, conveyance system is nothing but open channel flow the water will be uh, conveyed to the treatment plant using the open channel okay but if you want to provide gravity conveyance system the source should be high at higher elevation and the treatment plant should be lower elevation then only the water will be traveling under the gravitational forces okay but this is generally not recommended the reason the reason for not recommend is this gravity conveyance system is there is a chance of pollution uh, when you have open channel definitely the there might be man inducing pollution or animal inducing pollution might be there so there is a high chance of pollution polluting the open channel also the construction will be very, the cost of construction will be very high if you want to provide large canals large open canals the cost will be very high okay if you see the pressure conveyance system you will you need to provide only pipe okay you need to provide only pipe there will be no pollution there is no chance of pollution there is no chance of pollution and also cost is also less because you just need to provide one uh, pipe here that's it but the problem is uh, because of the pressure conveyance system you can only deliver small quantity of water if, the, if you want to provide very huge amount of water then pressure conveyance system might be little bit difficult because you cannot uh, transfer high amount of water but through open channels you can try, you can deliver very high amount of water okay right this is about conveyance of water we studied three steps source of water collection of water 
conveyance of water what is the next step next step is treatment of water treatment of water before getting into the treatment of water you should know the different different quality characteristics of the water the reason is if you want to give the treatment of water first you should know what are the impurities that could be present what are the physical chemical and biological properties of those impurities all those things then only you can give the treatment to the water okay we'll discuss them in the next lecture